The first thing I'm going to go over are push buttons and switches, which aren't really like sensors, but they can be used to interact with electronics. Shown here are a couple different push buttons. The difference between a push button and a switch is that these push buttons, you click the button and it, it snaps back up. The switch, uh, once you've, you've interacted with the, with the device, it, it's, it gets locked into place. So you switch back and forth. Now I'm going to go over the basic circuit for using either a switch or a push button. So you have your 5 volts and ground from the Arduino. And the circuit consists of a resistor. Let's just say it's a 10 kilo ohm resistor. The resistor is just so that you don't short the circuit when you uh, push the button down or, or, or flick the switch. And then you have a push button, which is symbolized right here. And then right below the switch, you read out uh, the voltage uh, into a digital pin. Let's just say it's uh, pin 2 right here. So the idea is that if the switch is pressed, or, or sorry, if the push button's pressed, or the switch is flicked, it completes the circuit. If it's not completed, then what's read out at pin number 2 is just ground. If it's connected, what's read out is, is 5 volts. So it is a digital switch in a sense, or a digital type of device in the sense that it can either be 5 volts or ground or 0 or 1 or high or low are the ways that it's described. Okay, now I'm going to hook up the circuit. We have the Arduino that's right here. And we've got a switch and a breadboard right here and uh, 10 kilo ohm or 1 kilo ohm uh, switch or resistor. Again, this, the resistor is just to prevent the circuit from being shorted when the button is press, pressed. So we connect the resistor to ground, then we have the switch connect from the 5 volts right here to ground. Now we can just push that pre uh, push the button, and then we need to actually read out the signal, and that's at this node right here. And I said pin number two was what we were going to go for. We need to connect to the five ground and five volts of the Arduino. Right there's ground. Five volts is right over here. Well, maybe a bit of a stretch. Need a longer cable. I guess we'll just use this blue one. There we go. Okay, now I'm going to go over uh, the, the code for using the switch. Here's a diagram for the circuit that we set up with the push pin. It's just connected to this resistor here and we're reading out from this node right here. Here's the code for doing that. We have a variable for the button the button pin is pin 2 in the in my actual circuit even though I've I've labeled it as pin 3 here then we have a variable for storing the digital read uh, the button state so it's 0 if the button's not pressed and 1 if the button is pressed it's just a boolean because it can only be uh, one of two values then we set up the pin input the, the pin mode as an input in the setup function. This is only run one time. And we set up the serial monitor with this line right here. In the loop, we're just doing a digital read of this one pin, from which is reading in from this, from this node, and then displaying the button state with uh, the serial dot print ln print line function right here. So to see the actual button state. We click on the serial monitor button right up here and that's this is just the live feed of of the of the button pin value. And right now the button is not being pushed, but if I click the button you see it turn to one right here. So you can imagine taking this input in and controlling some other electronic device. This is usually the first program that you you load on an Arduino when you're, you're you're just learning how to use it. And you're usually using this information 
to turn an LED on and off. I also have a circuit right here for controlling or reading in a bunch of different a bunch of push buttons in case you want to control uh, multiple devices or, or, or consider multiple inputs from your device and it's pretty similar to just a single button except the buttons are connected in, in parallel and you're reading in in this case uh, 12 different nodes which are located here just so the 5 volts is right here so just above just after the 5 volts above the push pin the code for reading in all those pins I have right here I'm not actually going to build the circuit but I just want to show you how how the code looks and again it's it's pretty similar to just a single button we have uh, the number of pins that we're reading in which is 12 I just have it I have 12 for reading in from pins 2 to 13 so that's yeah again 12 12 switches the initial pin it's pin zero, which is pin two in, in this in this diagram. Instead of just reading in a single value, um, I'm storing all the button states for these 12 different buttons into an array, which is shown right here. It's also a Boolean. Um, this is the, the big difference in, in, in the code, is, is storing the values in, in this array. You can also declare a a, bu a bunch of different variables like button state 0, button state 1, and so on but it's a little cleaner to just use an array. In the setup I use this function to initiate the array as having all the button states being 0 instead of using a for loop. Then with this for loop I am setting all of the all the pins to input pins and setting up the serial monitor and then in the loop function, I've got this for loop right here, which is reading in from pins 2 to pin 13, and then storing it with the, with, this di with the digital read function and storing it in this array button state, and then displaying that value and repeating this over and over again.